What's up guys, today I'm going to be trying the BK, which the community is saying he is so bad. What I'm going to be running with him is going to be fully ranger synergy with the Pekka. You know how funny the Pekka is when she can deal double the damage. And by the way guys, I am a little bit sick, so I'm sorry if my voice is sounding a little bit uncomfortable. Alright now, let's get back to the game. The enemy is going with the giant and the ice wizard. Luckily for us, Pika is going to target the NB. Oh, that would have been so funny if we got a crit in there. However, NB is down, which is so nice. Not a crit even against the giant. That is so unlucky. However, come on, Archer. I'm believing in you. You can do it. Archer? No, that was so close. I'm going to upgrade the BK to the invis, and we can do two things. We can pierce on top of the ice wizard with the NB or with the giant. I'm gonna choose the giant because he is not movable. He is using the decoy adept against the Pekka. That is a really good move, to be honest. Magic Archer is piercing on top of the ice wizard. We love to see that. I really don't like how his Pekka is targeting my archer. That is really bad. However, Pekka takes care of the NB, I think. And I should win this round ideally because we are having a full HP Pekka. In round number 3, I'm gonna try to activate my fully ranger synergy. Extra attack speed with the BK's buff is not something that can be messed around with. His last mini is the villager, that is good to know. Alright, Magic Archer should once again take care of the ice wizard. Things are looking really good till now. Villager is down. Pekka is targeting the NB, one big crit and the NB is down on the board. That was really beautiful. And we should be able to take round number 3 as well. In this round... You know what, I'm gonna go with the 2 star Dark Goblin and in case we lost this round, I will be having like 10 elixir in the next one to upgrade my Pekka to the 2 star. And B to the left, that is a really well played by our opponent to be honest. Now Magic Archer is not going to pierce on top of the Ice Wizard and NB is working on top of our backline units, which is something that I really don't like to see. The question is, no NB is gonna target the Dark Goblin. It would have been really insane if NB went on top of the BK. However, not a big deal, we are as well having a BK move to do. So bk to the left so that my backline units are going to be protected pekka to the first ability archer as well to the double shot and nice this is all that i want okay is the plan going to work out for us bk is not letting the enemy to target our backline units we love to see that villager is down our pekka one shot his pekka our pekka is so funny right now she is like a one punch woman his nb is finally down and we are going to win this game g to the g's in game number two we are facing pink fury in my opinion this matchup should not be that hard because the bk is having the invisibility which counters the pink fury really well so in the first round i really don't like to go with the invincibility only so i'm just gonna go with the Dark Golem and the Healing Ranger like this. Elixir Golem by our opponent. Nice. It is always fun when you are receiving more elixirs. Now the question is, will Pink Fury be able to farm some elixirs? Come on Dark Goblin, don't let her to do that. No, she got to, but not a big of a problem. In the second round, I'm gonna go with the BK's invincibility from now. And the magic archer in here as well. This time, because we are having the invincibility, it is just must be impossible for the pink fury to farm any kind of elixirs. However, let's see. Okay, now everyone is dealing double the damage. It is impossible. It is impossible. Are you serious? She got that? That was insane. We might honestly be able to clean sweep our enemy in this round because. It is just how ridiculous this matchup is in our favor. So I'm not gonna place my Pika till now. I still want to see if he is going to launch something with the tile or no. So what I'm gonna do is going for this, that, and the Magic Archer to the last ability. 
He is moving his pink fury to the left. All right. I see when there. That was a well played, honestly. Pink fury is going to farm some elixirs because of that. And he is as well going to win this round. But I know how to deal with that, guys. In round number four, first of all, moving the BK to the left hand side and upgrading the archer to the infinite range so that we can snipe his dark goblin. I'm gonna go with the Pika and the first ability on top of here. I'm gonna place the Pika right behind the BK. Like that, there is no chance for the Pink Fury to lock on top of here. And if you are wondering about will the Pika lock on top of the Pink Fury, my answer is going to be you definitely did not watch my last video about the 9 tips. Okay, everything is looking really good till now. Pink Fury is down. Dark Goblin as well is going to get sniped by the Archer and G to the G's, guys. If you hate Pink Fury players, this deck definitely is going to be the best for you. Alright guys, this is going to be the last game for today's video and we are facing AQ. This is so nice. I really wanted to see how good this deck is going to be against the Ghost. So I'm gonna use the pickup from the first round because he, she is not going to be useful against the Ghost in the later rounds. Here he is, the one and only mini that all the Clash mini community are struggling with him. And here he goes flying away. That was a really beautiful Pika shot. And uh, that is just going to be an easy first round. In the second round, I'm gonna try to place down a Dark Goblin with the infinite range so that he can stay as far as possible away from the ghost. Okay, a Dark Goblin with the infinite range as well by him. But our Dark Goblin should win in here because his Dark Goblin is not having any kind of tank. Alright. Are we going to win this one? The big is buff is out. A dark goblin with only two damage per hit is not going to handle this. In round number three, first of all, I'm going to upgrade my dark goblin to the second ability so that he can deal double the damage after each KO. Wait, no, we can't activate the fully ranger synergy. So what I'm gonna do is just restarting my Dark Goblin, that last ability is not going to be useful but his statments are going to be buffered, that is the main goal in there. Alright, the opponent is activating the fully ranger's synergy, which we should have as well but it's fine, we learn from the mistakes. Okay, Dark Goblin is going crazy, we might actually be able to win this round unless... No! The ghost is gonna make us lose this round. That was so sad. In round number four. In this time, I'm gonna make sure to activate the fully ranger synergy. Upgrading the BK to the invis. Ah, nice. You know what, guys? Healing ranger is not going to be useful in this matchup. So, I'm gonna place here right in there. We might be able to kite the ghost to the left with that. Okay. Are we going to stay in this game after this round? That is the question. I really don't like how his ghost is targeting the match archer. However, he moves to the left this time. That's so nice. The far he is from the dark goblin, the better it is going to be for us. We are going to win this round, but let's not forget. That was just a two-star ghost. The nonsense is probably going to start from this round. Okay, guys. I just did my best. If we win, I will be proud. If we don't, it is just going to be what it is. So what will happen? Magic Archer is having a really nice attack speed right now. Ghost has been kited really far away, but Dark Goblin, please. No, the ghost is going to wreck us. Well, this deck against the ghost might not be so powerful, but against the other heroes, it is like fire.